Uh, we can get right into it. My man, Futuristic is in the building. She, she. Uh, WTF stands for We're the Future, and a lot of people don't know. Mm. Yeah, me and my mans, you know, we add it up. WTF style. Uh, WTF originally started as my band's name uh-huh. in 2010. Oh. I had a band, and uh-huh. we were called WTF. Because uh-huh. I was like, what can fit, like, futuristic, but it's not, like, futuristic and the whatever. Like, yeah. we're WTF. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. how it started, and then we made merch that said WTF. So I'd wear it in videos, and then it was like, people wanted it. Just took off. So then I was like, okay, mm-hmm. this needs to be merch. And then uh-huh. it just kind of became a movement. Hell, there's probably, there's, mo- I'd say multiple, like, 200 people that have this WTF tap. Uh-huh. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like, it's wow. been getting yeah, That's a it's, movement. since Yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's really a movement. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So how, how did that turn into Sheesh? Because then now you have Sheesh, which is your mm-hmm. your, your, your tagline. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So Sheesh is just something kind of like sauce. Like, and I, I once you, like, uh, being ahead of the curve, too. Like, I was saying sauce way before everybody was saying sauce. Uh-huh. And everybody That's started true. saying sauce. Yeah, and, and I was saying and everything. Yeah, and I was saying sheesh. And then now everybody's saying sheesh. <laughs> that's true. I heard it in a song one day, and I thought of you. And it's, I was like, but that's not I It's felt, everywhere. Hey, yeah. I used to say, I, every now and then, I would say sheesh. Like, if I saw something on the internet, I'd be like, sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I heard it so, heard him start saying it. And then I'm like, man, I can't say that no more. because <laughs> and, now, and now it's huge. Right, it Everybody's yeah. saying it. Drake's I hear a lot coming of, on a song like sheesh. Yeah, Drake's I've heard Sheesh. Drake say it yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah, yeah. Can you copyright that? Can, can you get that you, patent? You could. I could have. Not now, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm I probably sure. could have. I mean, you got the clothing mm. line, though. Yeah. The clothing line is de- line is definitely trademarked, definitely patented. Your clothing um, line is dope, by the way. Thank you. I'm I feel actually like it's your rocking, vibe. Which, rocking Total. a little bit right now. Which Love is it. now uh, in Zoomies in yeah. 35 locations, well, I heard. That's yep, amazing. Yep. That's, Congrats yeah. on that. Hold that's on, huge. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. That's Rob ridiculous. Applause. That's dope. Yeah. Yo, do, do you realize that, like, you're the guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you've been the guy for a long time. When it comes to the whole Southwest as a whole, Arizona as a whole, like, there's no more debates on, like, who's th- who's this and that. Like, People really you still have... debate it, though. No, there, there's no way. They don't have anything better to do. There's so. no way. <laughs> at, at some point, maybe a few years ago, it was, like, debatable, you know yeah. what I'm saying, based mm-hmm. off of, like, what uh-huh. certain people have done. Mm-hmm. But at this point, like, the, no, the crown. No... You got the crown. There's well, no. thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, unless people are delusional. So I have I have a question that I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. Well, first I want to tell you, one thing I've always admired about you is how much you support other artists like Thank within you. the state. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate like, that. Like, because I'm a fan of a lot of people, and then I see you working with these same people, and I'm mm-hmm. like, this is so dope. Like, that's what it's about. When you get to a certain yeah. level, you help everyone. But one thing I super appreciate is that not only do you support um, music artists, I've seen you support visual artists. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask about, you had um, a bunch of muralists come to your house, yeah, right? And yeah, do yeah. some stuff. Yeah. So like, what made you do that? How did you find artists? Like, I wanna know more about that project. Um. So yeah, so I have I have a crib that's basically like, my videographer lives there, my merch slash engineer slash bestest pal lives there, uh, and Truvon, another mm-hmm. artist, lives there. Love so Truvon. Truvon is so Yeah, cool. and I have a recording studio there. I run uh-huh. my merchandise out of there. So it's literally like a business house. But I wanted it to be like when you go in that house, you're a kid again, and your uh-huh. imagination is to its fullest potential. Yo, uh-huh. it low-key looks like Fantasy Factory. Like, yeah. That's what I, yeah. I, I imagine. I've yeah, seen there, the pictures. It's there's dope. a basketball court. I'm mm. building a mini golf through the uh-huh. whole backyard. There's a trampoline. <laughs> so there's a pool. It's like Pee Wee's Playhouse so over there. There's an arcade. <laughs> there's pool tape. Like, That's it's just the dopest vibe uh-huh. all around. So I just wanted to build a cool environment that's like something that nobody else has. Like yeah. when you walk in that studio, it's like it's the dopest studio you've ever seen. Yeah. When you walk in that backyard, it's the dopest backyard you've ever seen. Yeah. And not with being flashy, just uh-huh. like opening up your imagination and making you think. So uh-huh. I was like, I want to paint all the walls something different. Uh-huh. And I want to have local because I, I just kind of I moved back out here. Uh-huh. I went to first Friday. Yeah, I started I getting into the scene there. and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is dope. This is so dope. many. Artists. This is dope. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, there's enough here. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. to do something uh-huh. dope. So I just reached. I posted on Facebook and like there were so many people tagged. And so yeah. I just went through and picked them out and was like, yo, I'll, you know, shout you out, uh-huh. um, you know, reimburse you, throw you some bread for the wall. And I uh-huh. had all them come the same day mm-hmm. so everyone could vibe with each other and right. network that way. Uh-huh. And I, I think I might want to do it yearly. Uh-huh. Like do a, year, a yearly cookout mm-hmm. where all the walls change and uh-huh. like you get 10, yeah. be yeah, 10 new artists be and they paint the walls and uh-huh. yeah. I think that'd be super dope. Yeah. So being a visual artist and being yeah. in that industry, yeah, like yeah. I see the growth and 
and the potential that's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know I appreciate it. Thank you. I definitely need, <laughs> a, really I need, a, uh, I need a piece for the house, too, oh, by the way. Yeah. I, I need to go through the collection. And let's not forget, though, there is an iconic piece of Futuristic with the crown. In guest list. In guest list. Oh, yeah. It's a guest list. Yeah. We did a video. Um, I'm going to say this on air. I normally don't tell people, but I did that painting in like three hours or something. Wow. Tez came through and recorded me. Like, he sat there with me the whole time and like Flames. banged it out. So, and uh, yeah. So a lot of the in, best things come like that. Like, yeah, the, the greatest. Just naturally. The song that made me pop off, I literally wrote in like 12 minutes. Crazy. Which one was that? The nerd rap. The, oh, the nerd rap? Yeah, yeah. That's it's just it like when you feel it, like it just you know, it happened, yeah. literally happened. It's the same thing with relationships and and all that stuff you've built. You know what I mean? Stuff naturally happens. You don't yep. have to force the really good stuff. Exactly. Going back to uh, helping other artists in, yeah. in in your record, I want and I get it. You say uh, I'm just trying to put everybody on in the state of AZ. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um, I found that very interesting. Not okay. because. I didn't think that I don't think that you're not doing that, but because so many people have so many things to say, you know what I'm saying about what you're doing, what you're not doing, you know what I'm saying. And for you to say that was like it was proof. Like, look, he's got to do what he's got to do, but his his you know his main you know <laughs> goal at some point is to possibly do that, right? The this is something that that I'll say. The only people that hate me are the people that have never met me. Wow. Mm. Period. So unfortunate. Mm -hmm. The only people that hate me are the people that have never met me. And like, okay, putting somebody on, think about it this way. Like J. Cole has artists signed to him that you have no clue who they are that are right. way smaller than me that just performed out here and there was not that many people at the show. You right. know, like like ASAP Rocky has how many people signed to him that you don't know who they are. And these artists are way bigger than me. Right. Mm -hmm. So what makes you think <laughs> that I can put you on and the next day you can be where I'm at? Right. It's just not, that's not right. how it works. So when I say I'm going to put somebody on, I'm going to put you on game. Mm -hmm. I'm never, Opportunity. I have never right. once withheld knowledge from nobody I have, mm -hmm. I've been an open book this whole time mm -hmm. anybody that wants to ask me a question and wants to talk to me about something I'm an open book mm -hmm. and what people don't understand too is when you win and you help other people win mm -hmm. you're winning even more yeah so there's no reason to withhold any information or any anything like right. if I if I can build up five dudes and they all get bigger than me uh -huh. hopefully they turn around and they let me open up for their show right. yeah. and they do a feature for me right. and you know they, they help me out and right. that's what I've been trying to do this whole fucking time <laughs> but, but and nobody gets it but at the same time Man. though you can't just give an opportunity or or give game to, to somebody who, who doesn't deserve it right. you, you or can, who isn't ready for it you can give game to everybody but it's a matter of how they use it right. right so i can tell you i can tell you a million ways to be successful but if you don't have the drive you don't have mm -hmm. the mindset and you don't have the work ethic then you, it don't matter. Yeah. So actually, and right now I'm actually writing a book. Mm -hmm. So I'm Stop. really yes, it's 51 Stop. pages. What? You know what I'm saying? I'm so for that. yeah, it's Bro, gonna what? it's gonna come out, and everybody can get that game and take with take it how you want to, and mm -hmm. and apply it like uh -huh. like That's hacks, cool. like everything we talking about is hacks, like uh -huh. literally exactly how to do it. Like send me to the where, link for pre to where you can make money as an independent artist, and you can be straight. You may not get to this level but you're gonna get to a level right. where you can make right. money as an independent artist if you do all this shit and you're not trash right. did you ever think that you could accomplish all this and what you've done and been so successful from music in Arizona yeah yeah but that's where it starts like I feel like you need to visualize and, and yeah. believe it and, and people I've been doing this since I was six like Amazing. I was literally selling CDs in third grade. Yo, I, like I, in the lunch line, like, uh, oh, you're not getting the uh, the free lunch. You're uh -huh. you're gonna buy the a la carte. Okay, buy this instead. Wow. Like literally, so like smart. pressing dudes. Like, mm -hmm. wait, you got three dollars? Okay, you're uh -huh. gonna get you're getting that pudding right there. No, uh -huh. for sure, you're getting this CD. I uh -huh. saw in an interview a long time ago that that you used to sell a lot of things at school and you used to uh, sell shoes, shoes, and, candy, like, yeah, all this. Everything. Is, is that where the business mind frame came from? The business mind really came from my pops mm. when I was little. He, I, there was nothing that I ever he never gave me anything anything mm -hmm. I ever wanted even if it was just to go to eat 
Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you want to go to eat? Okay, first you have to help me change the tire. You have to help me paint mm-hmm. the deck, and you have to do this. And I'm like, hmm, is it? And he would never make me do it. It'd just be like opportunity cost. If you want to go mm-hmm. to Red Lobster, uh-huh. then you have to do more shit than if you wanted to go to McDonald's. Oh, you uh-huh. want to go to McDonald's? Well, you know, mow the grass. Oh, you want to go to Red Lobster? Mow the grass, change the tire, paint the deck, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and call your grandma. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> so that was that was really where I learned just the, the worth of a dollar and... and uh-huh. In business, like if I wanted to buy a Pokemon card, if I wanted a Pokemon card, I had to work to get that money to get the Pokemon card. Uh-huh. And then by the time I worked that much to get the money, I didn't even want the Pokemon card right. no more because I worked so Went hard to, the to get the money. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I just didn't. Yeah. So, Natural born hustler. If yeah, you, yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. This is just out of curiosity. If you weren't a musician, what career field would you mm, want to be in? Interesting. If it was outside of music altogether, like I couldn't be a yeah. promoter, a manager, nothing. Nope. Outside of music, I'd be a Math. I'd be a freshman math teacher and coach ba- and coach basketball. <laughs> a freshman math. Te- I hate math. I would teach. I would I teach. Hate math. I don't like math, but I really liked algebra one two for some reason. I know that Ooh. is math. But Interesting. Like, anything past that, I didn't like. It's good, good with numbers. But yeah, <laughs> algebra numbers. one two, like mm-hmm. solving for x. You know what I'm okay. saying? Like okay. like that and being uh-huh. a basketball coach or or uh-huh. even a, a special ed teacher and uh-huh. coaching basketball. I didn't know you played basketball. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. That's super dope. Every day. Yo, yeah. Yeah. And 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 like you're kind of nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know. You got a little, little jump shot, a little jumper. Yeah, the range is definitely pure. So, <laughs> hey, uh, speak on the on the Phoenix Suns thing. How did you link with the, with the Suns? And, and, and was the con, did you really get a contract from the Phoenix Suns? Or was that, was that, that you, well, I, I, I know you got to practice and I loved all the hang out and stuff. in the They're arena. Great. Like, that was yeah, dope. Yeah. But no, yeah. I really got a contract, but not a 10-day contract. I got a year contract, but not what? to play basketball. Not to play basketball. <laughs> I was the brand wow. ambassador for the Phoenix Suns for this last season. Uh-huh. Uh, we may or may not, you know, do it again next yeah. year. But um, it was basically a contract saying, you know, that I am, I guess, I guess, I don't want to say the face. Obviously, Devin Booker is the face, but like uh-huh. music-wise, like I was the, yeah. you know, I'm the intro song. They sold my clothing in the store. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, any commercials that they did, I I was doing that. Uh-huh. Um, they, you know, I got good seats. I got paid. I got, you know, so it was uh-huh. brand ambassador for the Phoenix Suns. Oh, and part of my deal was, you know, a game you get to play, play uh-huh. on the court. You know, these uh-huh. certain games, and yeah, uh-huh. and we also. Oh, you want a squad? A, you want a squad? Just say, I, it. just I say. Need, it. I need. It. There was a few games uh-huh. where. If they would have just subbed me in when they was losing by twenty, <laughs> yeah, I for sure. It like if been... I played a forty, what's forty eight minutes? If I played forty eight minutes, I for sure have at least ten points. Literal. There's game no changer. doubt in my mind. Yeah. How did I'm that pulling. happen? How did like the Suns thing even happen? Uh, Alan Williams is a fan of my music, and they were going to re-sign him. Uh huh. And so. Actually, no, that that didn't even happen first. The first thing that happened was Devin Booker, he got his shoe deal. Mm -hmm. And when he got his shoe deal, um, they hit me because they wanted to redo the Jordan Spike Lee. Mm -hmm. So they wanted... dope. Yeah, they wanted somebody that was, you know, animated Uh and it was, you know, popping in that lane. So it was like, yo, futuristic, perfect fit. I did that. Uh And it was the most viewed video they had ever posted on their Facebook. Yo, that was the illest thing I'd ever seen. Super dope. And like, to keep it real... The Suns haven't been great. And like to see you in there and like spice it up, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Add some flavor. It was like, yo, this is dope. We need yeah. this. Yeah. Right, right. Super dope. For sure, for sure. Okay, so it started with the shoe deal? Started with the shoe deal, and then they wanted to re-sign Allen, and they knew he was a fan. Uh-huh. So this is before I was like with them. Uh-huh. Uh, they were like, yo, we want you to do a song for Allen. We're going to re-sign him, and we're going to play this uh-huh. to like get him to really want to stay. Uh-huh. So I did that, and they're, you know, he re-signed, and then uh, once again, they're like, man, the interaction is great. Uh-huh. Let's work out a deal for the season. Uh-huh. And then I kind of came up with the terms of the deal, uh-huh. and... They rocked with it, and that That's was amazing. it. What did that, that feel like? Like, what did that feel? It was that like had a dream, to have been man. Like, it was cool. That's huge. Yeah, it was. It was really, really cool. Yeah, uh-huh. it was. It was dope because it's like love and basketball. Like, I love <laughs> music and basketball. It's my two things put together. Aww. Like, music and basketball has been like just, forever. So the merge them. Dream, yeah. man. You living yeah, a yeah. dream. You know, I would have cried for sure. <laughs> going back to uh, going back to like 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 the city and the scene. Um, I know you pay attention to it when you can, you know, mm-hmm. overall, you know, and, and, and you've been involved with it. So you've seen it grow. Um, you've worked with a lot of artists, you know, yeah. out, of, out of Arizona. What, yeah. what is your take right now on, on where it, the state of Arizona hip hop and how, how, how it's come along? It's bigger and better than it's ever been yeah. by, by a, 
I would say by a long shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. would say by a long shot. I mean, there's been there's been other success, you know, shout out to the, the OGs and, and the first people doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think right now there's more of a variety. But that's just music in general. There's more of a variety. Independent, you, yeah. Yeah, you can do more stuff. You know, everything is at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So people are starting to utilize it and really learn how to do it. And, you know, now there's it's not just me either. Like, Injury Reserve is from here. TMP, heard of them? Yeah, 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 they don't. Injury Reserve is from here, and they're now touring and, and mm -hmm. killing, doing their own tours. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's it's, multiple it, people that, and I think that there's more. I think that there's more that are going to oh, break absolutely. through oh, yeah. and and continue to do it. I feel oh, yeah. I feel like like we've never been in a position like we have been now, and now we have somebody like you who's breaking the door open to the whole state, the city, the Southwest yeah. mm -hmm. for more opportunities. So like, it, it, man, this is the time right now, yo. Independent artists, all the artists that, that come through here. We hear a lot of dope stuff, but right oh, yeah. now, like you said, this is the best time, you know what I'm saying, with mm -hmm. uh, respect to underground, the festival. There's so much going on. This, the, the unity and everything is there. I hate that word, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like yeah. I've never seen the support like I have uh, you know, nowadays. Yeah. Right. That being said, too, why is it, is it just me, or why does it seem like local radio doesn't or hasn't really... Showed Local you, radio showed you, trash. hold on, showed you the love <laughs> that that you deserve. Oh man! Because I mean, you've been doing it at a higher level yeah. more than anybody ever in the history of Arizona hip hop. It's because I don't suck Why nobody's they balls. Not? <laughs> I don't suck nobody's Thank you for getting fucking to the balls. Point. I don't man, suck nobody's say balls. That. Man. Mikey, I'm not sucking nobody's balls. Straight up. <laughs> but no, that's really it's. It's bullshit, to be honest with you, because I look at it the same way, the same way you looking at me like, yo, you supporting people and you doing this and you doing that. Like yeah. you writing a book, you bring you. I opened a recording studio, multiple recording studios since I've been back. Like I'm supporting everybody and I don't have to do none of that shit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. no, Y'all no, no. have a radio station and you supposed to support people and yeah. you supposed to put people on but like, and you're yes. not doing it. But I get I get where they're coming from and only to a point because I get the corporate thing. But when you have one artist like yourself who's national, millions of views on the on the net, like you could use this person, you know what I'm saying? And he's from your city. Like, I don't yeah. understand why, how? Yeah. How does that not work? Bro, I've, I've sat in multiple radio stations. I've sat in mul multiple radio stations and played them songs and, you know, talked to them. And it's, yeah, you know, we did it. But the crazy thing is they don't even support the shows or anything. No. Like, 101.1 has been the only station that supported a show. I tried to have 98.3 support a show, and they told me no. Mm. Um, 101.5 told me no. So, and these are people that, like, I've had relationships with you, and like when I was a nobody, I talked to y'all, and it was cool. And and now that I'm, it's just it's, it's weird. So backwards. So when when I, the thing is, if if I get a no and and you don't seem interested, I'm not gonna keep asking you because I, first first of all, I don't need you. I don't need radio obviously, out here. Obviously, obviously. Period. So yeah. if anybody's sucking anybody's balls, it's definitely not me. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's just how I feel about it. And. As far as that, like, I actually saw Mikey the other day from 98.3, and I, t I literally, he walked up to me, and I was like, bro, like, play my shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and then we had a, it's, it's not hate, we had a good conversation, but I'm just blunt with it. But yeah. I don't understand. It's crazy. I don't understand yeah. why couldn't you even play one verse in, in, a, in a live mix? I mean, they have DJs that, yeah. that do no, live I will mixes. No, I will say this. Let me, take, let me take a couple things. Let me slow down a little bit. <laughs> they did, they do, back in the day, they did put me on remixes. So they would let me spit a verse over a song that was popping and play yeah. my version of it, mm -hmm. which was actually super, super dope. So shout out to 98. Yeah, for, I've heard them do for, that for, for a few For artists. doing that. They yeah. did that for me and Collins and a couple other people, right, right. which was really, really dope. But yeah, every time I've sat down and like pitched original music, they just really wasn't feeling it. And I feel like- Is it because you're independent? I think partially, yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, there's lab no money in it. Labels there's still, no label money. Labels still can, you know, control all of that. But I think that when you have a platform, sometimes you stick your neck out, uh -huh. and sometimes you make a move. And in my city, I think I have enough support to where if you did play my song, it would be listened to, yeah. it would be talked about, and people would be hype about it. So I think that's a play that should have happened mm -hmm. multiple times at this point. I mean, so yeah. that's that's my frustration with it. You know, shout out to them for looking out for me on the beginning. But it's uh -huh. crazy that now that things are bigger, and I've asked you to do multiple things, and it's not like I like I always anytime somebody does something for me, I'm mm -hmm. always the first one to do something back for them. Like right. I always have your back. Right. And so it's just like it's weird that they don't support me and other people. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't understand it. it. And and you know, to be honest, like, you know, we get we get hated on for what we do because we're not terrestrial radio. You know, we can do a lot of things, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it seems like even the industry, the radio industry is changing to the point where 
people aren't listening to FM radio anymore because yeah. they have satellite, Bluetooth, you know, Spotify, right. you yeah, know, yeah. every Apple Music. So yeah. the way we listen to music is even way different. different. So it, and that know. affects everything. Music yeah. sales, radio, everything. But I know when you go into other markets, you go to other cities and like, you know, they, they really support their, their hitters out there. They really do. I, sh I get supported more in other cities it's on radio on radio than I do here. So yeah, I would like to see them fix that and hopefully th hopefully they do and I think they have the ability to. I think 1015 doesn't have the ability ability to, but 98.3 definitely has the ability to play other people's stuff from time to time. Mm -hmm. It don't have to be in main rotation mm -hmm. right away, but mm -hmm. if it's do like come on. I've come heard on. I've heard other artists say the same thing come like on. About the radio stations out here, Come on. some of them, not I all mean, of them. low key. I mean, that's that's kind of why Icon Radio exists. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to compare it to anything, but it's it's you know, a different thing. It's independent. Yeah. But like like I said, the main thing is when you have a platform and you can help people and you can do good, mm -hmm. you should. Right. Absolutely. You should. Especially you, man. Come on. You should. <laughs> so, so in in today's era, though, like, why do artists? Why do independent artists still fight to be played on FM radio? If that's the case, because obviously you didn't need it. I don't think. I mean, I don't. It's just. A, it's a cool look. Like at this point, it's a, it's more of a look. I think than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Because getting played on in one state isn't necessarily gonna make. It's well, it's not. It's not gonna make you or break you. Right. Like, and that's what I said. Like I don't need it. Mm -hmm. But it's just another thing that's like it should. Ju it should be there with everything else. It right. Sh it, just it should fits. be happening. But I. I don't necessarily fight to get on radio. And maybe if I fought a little harder, maybe I could have pushed uh -huh. more but once i hear no a few times from somebody that i feel like shouldn't be saying no then it's all like right. all right cool i'm on my way yeah do your thing you mm -hmm. don't need me i don't need you yeah. we're both successful without yeah. each other so yeah so that's so, wild man so talking about so don't get that. we're talking about independent artists local artists yeah. do you have like favorites like favorite artists from from here arizona specifically oh uh. Come like on. a top five. I he said Truvon. Shout out to Truvon. Yeah. Truvon is so dope. Truvon, so Truvon lives dope. in my house, so of course I had to say Truvon. No, Truvon's <laughs> dope. Um, Markel. Yo, does she hug you really hard? So hard. So aggressive. <laughs> like, those are the if best you're not hugs. ready, she'll like hurt your back. Like she'll you're not ready. You, she'll make you fart. I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm in my mid thirties, Truvon. You gotta like it. give me a, a whistle or something. Yeah, yeah, no. Truvon's dope. Uh, injury reserve is dope. Markel's dope. Delhi is dope. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many. Ali Tamanik is dope. Dope. Um, there's a there's a million. Oh, Brown Boy Maj is super fire. Super dope. Yeah, yeah. Um, Judge has been dope for a long time. Yeah. Um, who else opened my show? I had like uh, we had Sob Story. Yeah, Sob. Yeah, I Saab. love Sob. Sob Story is dope. He's so good. Um, and Willie was on. And did you know that he threw two thousand uh, dollars <laughs> in hundreds? On it was stage? No. it was that much. I thought I th he think he threw two hundred. It was like fifteen hundred. It was fifteen hundred dollars in hundred dollar bills. And people started grabbing it, and he yeah. was like, "No, I was just trying to throw <laughs> it on the stage." Hey, hey, and he asked yeah, for it back. Will thing Willie ever. is crazy. Willie that was is the crazy. best yo, thing Willie, ever. You wild, hey, yo. what up, boy? It's your boy Willie Northpaw, man. We out here, body being marked up since so, oh, wait, guys, you already know. <laughs> That's yeah. a good impression. Oh, Willie's, Willie's my, Willie's so my guy. Good. He's a freaking goofball. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So at this point, though, I mean, you, you, you're so successful in the independent game. I mean, you're killing the merch. You got your own brand. You're touring. Uh, all your shows are, are packed out. I mean, you got fans all over the world now. What's next, man? Like, are, are, are you... If, if a major deal came, label came to you, is that something your uh, option or no? Nah. So I basically... So all the label deals came between 2014 and 2016. I sat down with every single label, Atlantic, Universal. Um, my first deal ever was actually with Motown. Mm -hmm. Like I had all these deals lined up and um, I just kind of went through the process, which was kind of lucky. So I did, I did that pop song, Hold Each Other with a Great Big World. And we did- Jim That was dope. Yeah, we did Jimmy Fallon. Keep in mind, these dudes are 23 times platinum. Uh -huh. they, have a they have a Grammy. Uh -huh. And when I tell you these dudes saw 5% of their money mm. and these dudes lived wow. in, a, in an apartment that looked like this, uh -huh. it's crazy. That's wow. crazy. So I saw that, and then not on, not only that, when I had these meetings with these labels, I'd really start to like, because it, was, it wasn't just one meeting, it was like, I met with these labels like 20 times. Yeah. So I would start to, you know, build chemistry with a certain group of people, like the dude that was gonna be my A&R, and right. this producer, and this, this, and this. And then, now, you know, the eighth time I come, two of them dudes is gone. They somewhere mm. else. Now this dude's gone. Mm. So the whole team that y'all would have built around me would have left, uh -huh. which would have left me by myself. Yeah. Nobody, you know. Uh -huh. so Not a good sign. That's one yeah. thing. And then I also seen my homie write a song and he loved the song. 
and then they gave it to Chris Brown because when you're on a label, you don't own anything. So wow. if I make a hit and you like it and, and it's time for, let's just say Drake, it's time for Drake's new project to drop uh -huh. and he needs a banger that sounds like the one I just wrote, uh -huh. wow. they're giving it to him and they're you're going to get writer's credit, but it's not your song no more. Uh -huh. So That's it's like, crazy. I just look at, like we talked about happiness. Mm -hmm. Happiness is the most important thing. So when I sat down and really thought about, okay, I could, I could be way bigger than I am if I sign this deal. Mm -hmm. Or I could have everything, like be on somebody else's time, not be able to put out music when I want to, have my favorite song stripped away from me, uh, have all the people I'm working with leave, that would make me Ooh. livid. So yeah. I was like the opportunity, like and and that would, that would be a negative thing because you create that would create a lot of regret, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and and more towards a lot of things, right? And people, right? Mm -hmm. So it is, it's kind of like because being independent and seeing people that because a lot of my homies have signed and are now much bigger than me, mm -hmm. and um, so that's kind of a weird thing to see. But at the same time, I just sit back and look at it, and I'm just like, I'm a young. V successful dude who built everything myself I'm helping others do the same and nobody can tell me what to do ever mm -hmm. so I can't be mad at that yeah no and keep no, it real definitely. I mean and keep it real like so a label's you, out of the question at okay. this point keep it real you're one one hit away you know what I'm saying from really like I mean Grammy nominations mm -hmm. and winning it's, it's, a Grammy it's all, like, it's all right there like yeah. you really are right there I mean the label it, it, the, the major label is dead you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying and and with what he's been doing for how long? Ten years now? Strong, heavy, moving? Professionally since like I quit my job in two thousand twelve or thirteen. So So there's really nothing that, that that you can't do that what a label would, would offer. Right. Right? Only only thing is is the major it's 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 money. It's the backing. It's yeah, major it's backing. backing. They can get you looks that you can't get. Like right. when I said I did Jimmy Fallon and Good Morning America and all that, it was because I was on a song with dudes that was signed to a label. Right. Mm. If I did that independently you wouldn't mm -hmm. you wouldn't be on Jimmy Fallon or none of that. So but it's just they give you crazy looks that you can't get, but you also the average artist signed to a label sees ten percent of their money. Ten mm. percent. Mm. So crazy. it's like if you don't sell if you don't make millions and millions of dollars, which most cats aren't, there's a very select few cats that are selling, Drakes, you know, mm -hmm. that, are, that are selling that much. And if you're not, you're getting shelved. And that's why you see one hit wonders because somebody, a label will spend, you know, X amount of millions of dollars on you for one song to pop. And even though that song was very successful, if mm -hmm. your album flops, you still lost money. You could sell 5,000 copies of a single and still have lost money. Mm. on a major so label crazy. and not be successful in the label's eyes and now you don't get shit for your second project and you on a five year deal and you shelved now I'm five done. years later you try to come out with some new shit mm -hmm. it's not happening crazy slow and steady is the way to go I just learned so much tonight like <laughs> I real. have no idea I mean yeah and, and this guy's writing a book I, mean, I am. All this is in I'm the book. I'm ready for this book. All this is in the book. <laughs> Let me know when the pre order is. You're going to learn today. <laughs> You're going to learn today. Yeah. Man, I can't that... wait to drop it because I really want. This is the stuff people need to know. Yeah. So they, can, so they can make that decision for themselves. Like, I put all the pluses about labels and all the minuses, and then you can uh -huh. add it up. Like I said, yeah. when I say I can put you on, I can put you on game. I can't right. put you in the industry. Right. I can just teach you what I know, and you uh -huh. can take it where you want to. Yeah. Man, I think it's a tough. beautiful thing that you even want to do that because Hell so yeah. many people don't want to share information. Yeah, oh. man. And plus, like, you know, artists, you know, everybody wants something. They don't want, you know what I mean? They, they, they want to hand it to they them. They want to hand people it to them. People are lazy as hell. Yeah. You know, keep it real, though. Like, for an artist to do it on their own. Yeah. How much should they start with money wise? Should they save up to get a good, just put their name out there? What's it going to take on the independent nowadays? It just depends because, I mean, it's like I said, it's work ethic. Like money plays a part, but I had no money when I when I started. I didn't have no but money. You had the relationships that were. I had relationships, uh -huh. but that Valuable. came that came from building, you know, from people believing in me. Right. But like that situation happens to a lot of people. You hear a lot of stories. It's like, oh yeah, I met this dude. And That's then, true. So, but that was about networking. If I wouldn't have networked, and the the way I met Action was, I was like, man, who, you know, I got into this game. Like, oh, blogs are popping. What's the biggest blog in Arizona? Yeah. It was PhoenixHipHop.net, which Action <laughs> owned. Yeah. So that's how I met Action. Not mm -hmm. looking for a producer, I met him through that. If I wouldn't have been doing research and working, I wouldn't have met him. Uh -huh. So it's just like everything, you can make connections to kind of substitute for the money, you know? But right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think there's a set amount because you can, like the greatest went viral with no money. That was a connection. Mm. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't pay for the I Guess I'll Smoke feature from Dizzy. That was a connection. Uh -huh. So Classic, by the way. No, no, money, no money was really spent. Mm. So. so how do you think, I feel like, because I'm a believer in the laws of attraction. I don't know if you believe in that. Mm -hmm. So how do you, 
I mean, how do you feel like you've attracted all of these these things and connections into your life? What's crazy is everybody that like I've done songs with or am talking to now is all the people that I looked up to when I found out what independent music was. Mm. Because in 2009, I didn't know independent music existed. I didn't uh-huh. know you could do this. Uh-huh. I didn't know you could do it like this. Uh-huh. I thought you had to be signed. You know, you got discovered by sending in right. a mixtape and that's how it happened. Right. And then I discovered Hobson. Uh-huh. And then mm-hmm. I discovered Dizzy through Hobson. And then I was like, okay, these are the guys that are doing what I... And I discover, discovered MGK and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, how do I meet them? Mm-hmm. How do I open up for them? How do I do this? And I did all those things and that formed those connections. Uh-huh. So it's just about like, I think having goals, knowing what you want, knowing what type of person you are, and then seeking after like-minded individuals mm-hmm. and going to places where you're going to find these individuals. Right, right. Yeah. That's what it is, man. Speaking of goals... What do you Ooh. see? What do you have in store for the next five years? What are your goals for the next five years? Next five? Music wise or just in general? I'm going to say both. Okay. Mus- music wise, and this has always been my goal, I just want to be able to continue to tour. I do like 500 cap rooms now, sometimes 800 if uh-huh. I, you know, in my good markets. So I want to do 2,000 cap rooms. Mm-hmm. I want to have four artists under me that are all around my level. Mm hmm. Um, I want to continue to do business with Sheesh World, with my book, with the one take contest, with the sons. With all, I want to continue to do all this sort, sort of business. Uh-huh. Um, and my my end goal is to build a plaza. Uh-huh. So I want to build this plaza that's like centered around a venue. Uh-huh. And then so it's like everything an artist would need, because when I go on tour, my DJ needs to go get weed. I need to go get a haircut. Uh, my manager go, needs to go get food. Uh, he this my my other guy wants to go get a tattoo, mm-hmm. you know. So I want a plaza that's centered around a, a you know, a venue mm. with a tattoo spot, yeah. a barber shop, a recording studio, uh-huh. a place you can get your merch printed in case you run out of merch, mm. like all on site. Uh-huh. And every single spot has like a back door. Uh-huh. So like as an artist, you don't have to deal with the line out front. You go in the back, and each mm. each spot, like there's one barber chair in the back, uh-huh. and you can get your hair cut. I like that. There's idea. one That's tattoo dope. chair in the back, uh-huh. you get tatted up. Yeah. So it's like a whole plaza that operates, and all my businesses run out of this plaza. I want to help other artists. I want to have four at least four artists signed under me and tour the world mm-hmm. and be married and have kids and you know Aww, do all that good stuff that sounds amazing is that is that oh, you said five years yeah so you you, you, you think you can be married and, and kids in uh, five years ma- no not okay not. Oh, yeah. i'm thinking <laughs> 10 years <laughs> i'm thinking 10 years 10 years 10 years i'm just checking know. just checking oh you never know oh i know i need 10 for that is it, yeah what, what's that like though i mean being on the road you know is That's it hard to have a relationship question. on the road yeah, you you gotta just be in the right mindset. Like yeah. I've done tours where I've you know did did something crazy every single night on the tour. You know, yeah. went thirty for thirty, mm. like an ESPN <laughs> special. Nice. Or I've had a, a well, I've had one tour where I didn't do anything. So, but that it took mind control <laughs> because you just have to literally remove yourself from the situation. If not, yeah. it just gets thrown at you in such a crazy way. That it's like you're damn near gay if you don't. So mm. it's just yeah, having a relationship is hard, but. I think another thing too is just like you got to bring your girl out so she sees what it is because yeah. when someone thinks you're, you're oh you're on tour like there's a million girls there's this there's this yeah there is that a little bit yeah. but the whole rest of the day there's not none of that right like, it's really work you yeah, know it's absolutely. signing signing a hundred CDs for the meet and greet and the posters yeah. and right. going to get food and being in the same clothes just trying yesterday. to be on time to the place mm. yeah you got car trouble you it's know a lot saying? of other stuff that were like. It, like you said, not everybody's built for it. So right. I think bringing your girl out for, you know, I, never, not a whole tour, but, <laughs> but you know, bringing her out for four or five days in some uh-huh. dope cities, letting her see what the life is like. Yeah. So when she goes home, she can visualize it and know mm-hmm. like, yeah. okay, this is, when he tells yeah. me he's at sound check, this yeah. is what that is. When he yeah. tells me he's at the after party, this is what that is, you uh-huh. know, so. So I, what, what, what's the current situation right now? Uh, you know. I'm out here. <laughs> he out here. And he about to go on tour. And he about and he going on tour. So we're at 30 for 30. <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I, the the last tour that I did was the one where I didn't do anything with okay. nobody. And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I got I got somebody I care about. So very cool. I'm not doing that. Hey, but man, I, but man. I'm not getting married in five years. No. It's okay. very important to have a strong woman on your side, though. That's true. When a you're confident when you're in this industry, yes, a secure woman, confident woman. Build your lady up. Make her confident. Let her know 
how much you care about her and let her see your life and instill that confidence in her and let her be secure and stop fucking around and wilding out. Yes. Absolutely. If she the one. Hey, uh, speaking of goals, though, the, he has a new video that was just released called Goals for the mm -hmm. new single. And uh, dope video. Thank you. Very, very dope video. Thank you. Uh, my man, he, you got hit with the ball, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He always getting hit with stuff. What's going on? <laughs> he like he he the, go, he the goofy guy, you know. So he you know he hop out here and he live his best life. That's all we trying to do. <laughs> you talk about somebody being wild on tour. This guy, man. Is is there anybody like that that has to like manage you or like kind of like keep you grounded? Is is, is I think I kind of keep everybody grounded for the most part, unless I'm wasted. Right. Which I do less of now. What's, what, what's futuristic like wasted? I want to know. I feel like so much fun. Is that mic on over there? Yeah. What what kind of wasted? I mean, you tell me. What's the level of wastedness right? for this guy? I mean, well, what, I mean like, what's he drinking, though? Oh, it's vodka. Yeah, Ciroc, vodka all day. Good okay. choice. Like, Good choice. Hardly anything else. Like, never really any. Unless it's, it's rosé. Yeah, unless it's rosé. No Hennessy? Like, no. No, that's no Hennessy. That's you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a whole nother know. world. Uh, futuristic is like, he's fun when he's drunk, usually. Like, actually, no, all the time. Because he really doesn't get mad or no, uh -huh. no types of shit like that. It's like... I was going to say, you're like, fun when you're not drunk. So I yeah. feel like just, drunk is just like just, next But level it's like, fun. you know, there's, cer there's certain points to where it's like, I haven't seen him this drunk in a minute, but like, you know, if some, some little thing happens, you know, it might like set him off in a certain way. Like, either good or bad. <laughs> I'm, you know, right. I'm like really, really, really nice. And then I'm really really not if you push me to a certain mm. level but it's like it's it's like here to here uh -huh. like zero to a hundred real quick like uh -huh. and it, it i mean it's it's just it is what it is when, it, when it happens from time to time but you know because when you're in a position it what's crazy is, is it always happens in hometowns uh -huh. like the, the all the times i've been faded and like been in a, a fight or altercation at all has been here or illinois <laughs> and it's because somebody always want to test you where you're from because they feel like they knew you before or whatever mm. the case was yeah. and have some sort of hatred. Once again, somebody that's never met you right. or that doesn't know you and something will happen. And and you always end up getting the most drunk in your hometown, too, I feel like. But <laughs> yeah, because people, yeah, people yeah, want to see you. They're like, yeah. hey. It, you, I, used to be, I used to be bad. Like, I used to get wasted every night on tour, and uh -huh. I don't do it as much. But, yeah, as far as, like, crazy nights like that, like, bad crazy nights, that's like a once-every-three-year type thing. Mm, Yo, in, gotcha. in, in, in the record, I guess I'll smoke, you know, in your verse, you start out saying you're, like, like you know, you're on tour now. It's it's around. And then plus Dizzy, you know, you're on tour with Dizzy. Yeah, and then yeah. you're like, fuck it, I guess I'll smoke. Yeah. Because all these bad girls around, all these, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in the environment. Yeah. So is that, is that still a thing, or, or do you... Uh, pass it, I mean it was it's a thing but it's it's still like I guess I'll smoke but not all the time not just because I'm on tour like it's never I've never smoked like I smoked more when I was 13 than I do now <laughs> like I smoked I smoked kind of heavy until I had a basketball tryout and I was out of breath and I was like oh I'm gonna stop smoking for the season then when I tried to start smoking again I was hella paranoid uh. like just weird like go in the bathroom and check my face and shit uh -huh. like yeah. Oh, I look weird. <laughs> and, and like, just paranoid. So I really can't smoke unless it's around like a girl I know really well or mm -hmm. just the homies. Mm -hmm. Like, I could I could sit here and I, I couldn't smoke and be in this interview right now. I'd be, yeah. mm -hmm. I'd I feel be bugging. you, man. I can't, I can't do the smoking. I, I don't know bugging. how people can function. I really, like, yeah. when I smoke. let people down when I'm like, yo, I'm John Blaze. And like, yo, Blaze. I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, nah. bro. How you. Bro. Nah, bro. Oh, I guess I'll smoke, bro. Like, no, nigga. <laughs> no, I guess I won't. Please stop. But it's cool because everybody gives me weed and I give it to other people. So yeah, I bet that you get a lot of stuff. Yo, when yeah. you jump in the crowd, you guys do this every show. Have you seen this? Where they, I don't where, think I've seen the where, crowd where, surfing. Where his DJ goes in the crowd, stands up, they hold him up, right? Uh -huh. And he has the little like little uh, Space Jam basketball hoop, uh -huh. right? And they play the music. It's dope. And then. Futuristic runs and jumps into the crowd off the stage and uh -huh. dunks it all over these people. <laughs> it's the dopest it. shit ever. What's the, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened? Have you ever hit the floor? Have you ever not been <laughs> caught? Have you ever pulled I'd a six be nine? Done. I would be done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never never during the crowd dunk. Okay. Never during that, but definitely on a crowd surf. I was opening up. Well, it's probably. I'd say I have a good like five hundred surfs under my belt. Okay. And I've been dropped probably. Six Five or six times. It's not bad. It's not that's bad. A, it's, it's a good not ratio. Bad. That's, that's a good like painful, that's like shooting ninety nine point nine percent from the field. So yeah. it, it's good. Yeah. But 
when it happens, like uh-huh. mine have been bad. They've oh. been real bad. Like I was on tour with Somo. You know who Somo is? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Somo was just uh, he was he wasn't a very nice guy to me at right. least. But he was just like he came out the first day. He's like. Cause I had just got off a tour with somebody else who's like a frat college, like crazy party. Every night was a party. Uh-huh. Then I go on a Somos tour and he's like, I know you just got off the, the Mike Stud tour. You ain't gonna be turning up on my stage, throwing water, doing this, doing that. Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna be no surfing. And he left me like a little square on stage to perform. Wow. And me being who I am, I'm like, nigga, I'm for <laughs> sure, I'm for sure surfing. But he was actually right because his crowd is so many girls, mm-hmm. and the barricade is far. It's like marquee far. Oh, damn. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I jump, and I cleared the barricade, but the front row is all girls. They weren't uh, strong enough to hold They you. weren't strong enough. Yeah. So, like, one girl was just there to catch me, <laughs> and everyone else left. So, like, I just hugged this girl no. and grabbed her head like this and brought her in, and we both just smacked the concrete. Oh. But, like, luck, like, if my hands weren't behind her head, she would have... Yeah. It might have been night night. So, yeah, that was probably my worst crowd surfing. Or one time I over jumped the crowd. <laughs> like, How do like you do that? because you aim for like the strong people. Okay. And you, you know, you see uh-huh. them and you're like, okay, I'm jumping here. Uh-huh. And I just had so much adrenaline. I just jumped over them and once again hit a, a pack a couple weak girls. Uh, just bam, ribs, damn. ribs first on the ground. But uh, yeah, you know. You, I've never been able to do that in my career. <laughs> It's gonna happen one day. You could do it, man. You I'm gonna just go to one of you his shows and just jump on stage and while it's happening. Because you know his fans will su- they'll yeah. support you. Like they yeah. got you. He made he made a little white girl jump off stage during his show. I thought she didn't have a chance. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Always. I, I performed at a prom and made the king and queen surf. It was lit. What? Yeah, I did that like a Epic. month ago. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Epic. you did in her dress and everything. Dope. It was that is lit. so dope. I was like holding her dress. This and is why, could see it. dude. Those kids will never forget. This that. is yeah. why. This is why my man has the crown, man. Exactly. Yo. Uh, all right, being a new rapper today, uh, it's crazy, man. It seems like anybody can really get on with social media. In your latest record, Nobody Else, you refer to, uh, you have a verse saying, um, you know, at new rappers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have uh, people in the video portraying current new uh, <laughs> rappers, like yeah, yeah. Uh, 6 9 Lil Yachty, I think, uh, uh-huh. Zan maybe. Uh-huh. Uh, I think that's his name. But they're, they're portraying these guys. And yeah, as yeah. you're saying it, uh, have, you, have you heard this song, Antoinette? Yeah. I saw it popped up on my Facebook, actually. So, like just... so how, some of his lyrics, it says, all you rappers are only chasing the fame. All you rappers ain't about the cause. You, you talk about guns and drugs, but you've never been the one to get involved. So true, right? Yeah. What really bothers you about today's new rappers? Because you also mentioned in here something about, uh, you know, the the, the the impact that they're having on the youth. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot wrong with it, man. Like, like we talked about platforms. So these dudes literally have the biggest platform in the world right mm-hmm. now. Bigger than anybody. Yeah. Like Crazy. Lil Pump, 6 9 their impact right now is Dare I say it's bigger than a J Cole? It's mm. more influential yeah. right now. It's more true. people are t- like more people are watching a six nine video than a J Cole video right now. That's true. So Facts. when you have this platform and you acting like a fucking idiot, you have kids like I can give so many examples like like the Boom Gang dude. You have this Boom Gang dude running in malls stealing shit, saying Boom Gang. Yeah. We have people run into our store at guest list, steal shit, and yell Boom wow. Gang on the regular basis. That's, That's the type of impact you have. Uh-huh. So now you have all these kids that's doing stupid shit, going to jail, all because of the dumb shit you do that you staged. You're not even really doing it. Yeah. So, like, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Or you want to talk about drugs. Let's let's talk about Arizona and let's talk about drugs. When I was in college, I sat next to, to this dude named D-Tuck, who just passed away on my birthday, uh, from pills. Mm. Man. And that is the main thing. There's songs, Molly Percocet. There's all these fucking songs that's making people think it's cool yeah. to do drugs, and it's not fucking cool. Yeah. Nothing about it is cool right. at all. And you making these kids think that this is the life that they want to live because you're having fun doing this. And a lot of times they portray it so much, like more than what they're actually doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like even taking, I guess I'll smoke. If you don't know me personally, you think I smoke. Or your name's John Blaze. You think you blaze because your name. These dudes are getting millions and millions and millions of kids wanting to emulate them every day. Not to mention you got people running around 
Not that you can't express yourself however you want to, but not everyone can just fucking have face tats. Right. You it's can't like an go epidemic. and get a job with, Five with face plan. tats. Five right. year plan. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's Better just like make it. you have <laughs> you're influencing people in such a negative way, and you have the average Joe popping pills with face tats, holding guns, getting shot, ODing, and not getting jobs. Yeah. That's what you're creating, mm -hmm. and that's the future world. Like, there's rap is now the biggest genre of music yeah. out there mm -hmm. so more people are influenced by rap than ever so what the fuck do you think is gonna happen right. in 20 years when all these kids with these face tats and that have been doing pills and guns are in charge are in charge of the world right that's what you're doing more Ooh. Donald Trump's of the, of the world Ugh. with face tats <laughs> it's very true man and I know that the, you, you're very passionate about that yeah and, yeah and I know that you know on your last album uh you know you you refer to some of these things you know in your music yeah have you ever thought that like your music could actually change um kids lives or somebody's life or just impact them to a point where you know I'm sure you get that from fans at, at yeah, a lot. Beats, right a lot yeah yeah um it's I've always talked about it. Like, I've always been, like, the goofy rapper, but just because those are the songs that pop off. Yeah. But if you have any of my albums on every album, I talk about things that I've been through. Like, I was depressed. I almost committed suicide. I talk about that. Um, I talk about not doing drugs. I talk about all these different things. So, yeah, my whole career, my diehard fans that come to my shows, like my meet and greet, yeah. the 100 people in my meet and greet, at least half of them have a story mm -hmm. about how a song helped them and changed their that's life. Beautiful, and man. that's yeah. that's the coolest part about doing all yeah. of this. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's dope, man. So, and that's the thing that, like you said, these other rappers they're not thinking about there. Or maybe they haven't even tried. Who knows? It's right. Very unfortunate. And I mean, most of them are very young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a little benefit of the doubt. And the crazy, a lot of them are about to go through shit mm -hmm. because nobody's meant to be as rich. As these dudes are at that age especially nobody's meant to yeah. be that rich period yeah like you see the some of the most richest people in the world killing themselves like money doesn't make you happy and right. you out here chasing this money doing all this shit and it's they're gonna go through things and then hopefully they realize and then they talk about the things that mm -hmm. they go through like I think even like post Malone's new record was really dope and he talks about all that shit like he's yeah. got a song called rich and sad on there mm -hmm. and he's got a song about how like he got all this shit and now his girl's gone and all this shit don't matter like that's real life yeah so like once again the main thing the main thing to take away from it is happiness is key right so right it's very true man it's very true well hey man we appreciate having you bro yes. like like this was uh this is definitely a blessing and uh you know we could probably sit here and talk for hours you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. when you w when are you planning on dropping the book uh the book will definitely be out within the next month okay oh, yeah Jones. yeah I'm debating uh, because I have the one take contest going on right now, which is also, you know, helping independent artists. Mm -hmm. You know, they shoot a video, do it in one take. Winner mm -hmm. gets 2500 uh, So I think I might drop it right after that, and that ends June 22nd. Okay. So I might drop it after are, that. Are you the king of the one take? Is it official? Yes. <laughs> I'd say so. Because I didn't, know, I didn't see anybody doing it till he, until you started doing it, and then all of a sudden, like, one takes became a thing. But, like, I think a lot of people forget who started the one takes. Uh, I didn't say yes. I've been, yeah. I've been doing this. Right. <laughs> You've been doing I, this. I don't know. I don't I don't want to say I'm definitely not the first person to ever do a one take, but I think to make it like to coin it, make it a thing uh -huh. and yeah, like yeah, continue to do it was definitely like yeah, I don't I don't absolutely. think anybody else. I probably have more one take videos on the web than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Pro well, no, not now cuz they be jocking. <laughs> who, who, who's yeah, somebody happens. you want to work with though in the industry right now? Like who? Who's? I saw you, uh, you know, recently a couple weeks ago at the Jordan Lucas show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Did you have a chance to chop it up with him? Yeah, yeah. I've known him since like 2012. Mm. Yeah, I've known him for a long time, and actually, he was supposed to open my tour in 2016, and then he did Hobson's tour instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, Joiner is mad dope. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, Joiner's mad dope. Smino is hella fire. Have you ever heard of Smino? I've Smino. heard of Smino. I haven't heard of Smino. L look him up. I heard he's, he's flame. Super dope. I haven't um, heard of him. But. John Bellion. You ever heard of John Bellion? Uh, I haven't. He's a singer. Mad okay. dope. Um, yeah, Tori Kelly's mad dope. I want to, you know, kiss her and make a song with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I like like what's crazy is I don't listen to that much rap. Like, mm -hmm. I, well, definitely not mainstream rap. I listen to a lot of underground stuff, and mm -hmm. I listen to other genres. Like, if you're in my car, like I'm bumping John Mayer and I love John Mayer. Stuff, yeah. John Mayer, dope. Yo, who who did a young futuristic listen to though? Like, like who inspired you? Like, what made you? Who who was the artist or what was the song or album you heard and you were like, yo, this is what I want to do? Uh, 
so since I've been rapping since I was six, first song that ever got me was uh, Will Smith. Mm. Get, getting jiggy with getting it. Jiggy I love with it. it. Getting jiggy with it. it. I performed it at a talent show in Jamaica. Do <laughs> so, you have footage of that? You should I actually post do. That. I do have footage of that. I think. I gotta see that. That yeah. sounds adorable. And I used to change change all the words to make them uh-huh. fit like fit my life. Uh-huh. Who the oh. kid in the drop? You know Zach Beck living that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, you started early. Then. So yeah, so so early. that was like first influence, and then it was like Nelly and Ludacris and Eminem. Of course. Busta Rhymes, like all the animated rappers with dope ass videos, like uh-huh. yeah. when I was young, that was it, that was it. And then when I discovered independent music, it was Hobson and MGK was really at the forefront of like mm-hmm. dope artists that I discovered. Yeah, uh-huh. yo, and you, and, and you ended up working with Tech Nine. Yeah, Tech Nine. Got a record with Tech Nine, that, yeah. which is very very that was dope. Super dope. Yep, yep. Just seen him last week or a couple weeks ago. All right, so overall, though, if if you were talking to independent artists, what would you tell them? What What's the best advice you could give an independent artist? Maybe not even someone who started. Maybe someone who's been in the game. You know, they're just trying different things. What's the most important thing you could advice you could give an independent artist? Um, I'm going to bring it back to happiness. I'm going to bring it back to, to that and just look at your life and look at what you want. Make goals for yourself and make those goals based on what's going to make you happy. Um, and stay true to yourself. Because I've seen, especially out, well, just in general, local artists in general, you see they switch styles uh-huh. so much with the mm-hmm. trends. Yeah. And, and you have to stay true to yourself. And I think that's what will make you, that's what makes you unique. And that's what makes you pop. Like, there's already Amigos. Why the fuck are you trying to be Amigos? Right. There's right, right, already right. this person. Like, be you. Right. You know? And I think if you stay true to you and you put happiness first always, then your life will be straight, you know, music aside. Yeah, true. I agree Very 100%. True. Wise words. Futuristic. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, all appreciate day. You appreciate so y'all. And, and yeah. the new album, uh, you, you got to Did you drop another album? Nah, I dropped a. Uh, I dropped one, an EP on Thanksgiving, an album on Christmas, and right. an EP on Valentine's Day. And okay. now I'm just dropping singles. Okay, yeah, so just dropping songs right now. Mm-hmm. Dope, dope. Okay, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed Blessings. You know what I'm saying? That Thank was you. a really dope yeah. album. Thank you. Uh, every track was just, you know, yeah, unskippable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just fire. Yeah, all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, yo. Appreciate you being here. Where, where can people uh, find you? And what's the best way to keep up with, with, with Futuristic? Uh, at Only Futuristic, you know? All day. All day. Okay. And then do uh, you, you know when your next show in, in Phoenix will be? It will be the day before Thanksgiving. They got to wait. Oh, yeah. You can only do Build one or suspense. two a year. True. Yeah, like I try to just do one a year. Yeah. I feel like that's perfect. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to show out. Yeah. <laughs> and he a crowd surf. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, and uh, when when are we doing the the, the official barbecue at, at his house? When right? did you say that's that was? What I'm when that's it was, coming up soon. Yeah, right? yeah. That's what hey, I heard. Turn, Ciroc, that's what I turn, up, turn up. Let's do it. I always got Ciroc on deck. Yeah. All, All right, man. Once again, futuristic. Many blessings to yes. you, sir. Thank and, you. And uh, stay grinding. And uh, man, we'd love to have you back. Hell yeah! Thank All you right? for a cool interview. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. Kato on the track. Yeah. Yeah.